Welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Sabovas. Our goal is to discover, celebrate, and share Hungarian heritage and encourage you to do it too. We'll touch on food, travel, history, music, and language, and share stories from our listeners. We're glad you're here. This is a podcast where we'll encourage you to dig deeper to learn about your Hungarian heritage in a variety of ways. We'll have thought-provoking conversations and share resources. So whether you know a little or a lot about being Hungarian, this is the place to be. Hi, it's Liz, and today I want to talk about a couple of the important Hungarian foods I grew up with. Maybe you had them when you were growing up, too. Sunday was our Hungarian soup day. That's what we called it, but now I know the term is huslevesh. There's nothing like the aroma of a pot of clear broth soup simmering on the stove all day. I love it. First, you had to start with the meat. If there was beef soup bones in it, my mom explained to me that you had to soak the meat in cold water. Otherwise, the blood would come out during the cooking process and turn into that disgusting gray foam. Sometimes that happens anyway, and I skim off the foam as it floats to the top during the initial simmer. And some people do both. Once all the skimming is done, to keep the broth as clear as possible, leave the soup at a low simmer for the rest of its cooking time. Sometimes my mom used both beef and chicken in this soup. My mom always used the whole peeled potatoes and carrots, celery, a whole onion with the skin on, and whole peppercorns. I know there are other root vegetables that can be added to the soup as well, but we didn't really use them. I don't know that they were that easy to find. Prior to eating the soup, there was the bone marrow snack, sprinkled with salt on bread or toast, and when it was time to eat the soup, we always used the very fine noodles that were as thin as thread. In Hungarian, they are called cernatista, which means thread noodle. We each grabbed our soup bowl and ladled in some noodles and some broth and had these huge vegetables that we added to the bowl and then cut up so we could eat them in the soup. There wasn't a substantial amount of meat in the soup, but what was there, along with the bones, was enough to make a delicious broth. This is one of my favorite memories growing up. Yet, I did not make this kind of soup for my kids as they were growing up. I think my mom was always puzzled by that. Of course, I went to college in Nebraska when I was 18, and I never really came back home to live. And while my mom had given me a few tips and tricks in the kitchen, I had never made the soup on my own. So I would find a recipe in a cookbook that looked good or tasted something at a friend's house that was amazing and ask for their recipe. Of course, none of the people I was collecting recipes from were Hungarian. And that is the tale of how fast one can grow up on a certain food, absolutely love it, but have no idea how to make it. Once or twice a year, we would head to Ohio to visit my mom and brothers, and she would, of course, make amazing food. But by this time, I had small children, so I was dealing with them, and sadly, I wasn't in the kitchen paying attention. The Hungarian food was more often the food that my mom made, not me. Of course, now I can make a few Hungarian dishes, and my kids know about them and love them. We just don't eat Hungarian all the time. When we visited Hungary as a family and our newfound relatives in 2012, I remember meeting my grandmother's first cousins and their families in Tisakesi. It was a fun day meeting so many precious relatives. They had us over and served us lunch, and we were served very traditional and familiar Hungarian food. The meat soup I was just talking about, as well as cottage cheese and bacon noodles or turos chusa, which is definitely a family favorite. We had horka later, which is a special Hungarian sausage. Believe me, they fed us well, and it was an amazing treat to have these very special dishes in the village where my grandmother was born. And I think they were all very surprised that they had fed us things that we were very familiar with. In fact, some of what they served us are our most favorite dishes. Who would have thought that after a hundred years of this branch of the family living in the United States, that we would still be so connected with these food traditions? And to think that there were some years in there that I wasn't even making any of it. Some traditions might get set aside for a time, but never be afraid to pick them back up. I did cook some Hungarian food as my kids were growing up, and their friends loved trying the leftovers, especially when my younger brother Ernie would visit. Ernie loves to cook in large quantities and he is particularly good at cooking Hungarian food. He even owned a Hungarian restaurant with my mom for a few years called the Paprika Cafe in Youngstown, Ohio. When I need some Hungarian food inspiration or explanation, he is definitely my go-to guy. 
Of course, we all know that practically any Hungarian food is better left over. Our children's friends loved when we had chicken paprikash or rakotkumpli leftovers. I imagine you know about chicken paprikash. It seems to be well known, but you might not be familiar with rakotkumpli. It translates into layered potatoes, but there is so much more to it than that. You need boiled potatoes sliced, hard-boiled eggs sliced, Hungarian kobas sliced and fried up a little bit, sour cream and paprika, and we use a little Lowry's seasoning salt. Layer all that a few times in a baking dish and then bake it. It's an amazing dish, but what makes it truly delicious is using Hungarian kobas. Now, you might be watching your carb intake, so you can substitute cooked cauliflower for the potatoes, and it is also pretty fantastic and much lighter, as you can imagine. We will share links to these recipes in the show notes, but if you have some family recipes, dig them out. Let me encourage you to either start practicing the recipes if you haven't made them in a while or ever, or bring them back into the rotation. Hungarian food is amazing, and we are all eating at home more these days, so this is a perfect time to add a fun variety to the weekly menu. And if you have kids or grandkids at home, get them involved in the process. It's a great way to pass along Hungarian traditions. We do have a few fun Hungarian cooking classes coming up in October that you might want to check out. All of them will be live classes happening on Zoom. We will have a Hungarian honey cake class for beginners. Hungarian honey cakes are called mezes kalach in Hungarian, and these classes include the dough mixing and baking, as well as the decorating. We will also have a selen sukor class. Selen sukor is the traditional Hungarian Christmas candy that is hung on the Christmas trees. We will learn how to make and wrap these candies. And we will have a meringue circle or hopchuk making class. Hopchuk are an easy, sweet decoration you can hang on your Christmas tree. I will include all of the links for these classes in the show notes. Your October can be filled with all sorts of fun Hungarian holiday treats. And in case you haven't heard, we are also offering Hungarian lessons this fall with a live teacher at a variety of skill levels. But hurry, our fall session starts in early September. There are evening, daytime, and some weekend classes. There is some more information at the Mudyar Marketing website, but you will need to message us right away so we can find a spot for you. You can call us at 1-800-786-7851 for more information on any of our upcoming classes. So, what is one of your favorite Hungarian dishes that you remember from your childhood? How long has it been since you had it? Have you ever made it? Let me know. Send an email to podcast at hungarianliving.com. And if you have the recipe, I would love to see it too. Thanks for listening. Hungarian Living is a division of Mudyar Marketing, the Hungarian store, where you can find meaningful gifts with Hungarian style. Check us out at mudyarmarketing.com. And special thanks to Stephen Chichek and the Animal Cannibals for the show music. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Hungarian Living, please subscribe and share this podcast with your favorite Hungarian. Check out our show notes for links to resources mentioned in this episode. If you have a question or comment, email us at podcast at hungarianliving.com. We'll catch you next time.